Hey everybody, I'm Chili. Welcome back to Beginner C++ Tutorial 19. Today we're talking about vectors. And you might ask, well Chili, what the fuck is a vector? Anyways, I've been hearing a lot of hubbub about this vector shit. Well, I mean, if you ask 12 year old Chili what a vector is, you'll probably get an answer something like, uh, it's the capital of the empire, and it has a kick-ass Magitech research facility run by a yellow dildo man who's really into industrial music. I used to be a really huge Final Fantasy nerd, what can I say? Now these days the answer is a little more complicated because there are actually two kinds of vectors that we'll be dealing with as C++ programmers. The first kind is STD vector and it's a container that holds objects. It works a lot like an array, but it can grow at runtime freely. It's basically the tits, and uh, after, we after I introduce it, we're going to be using it a fuck ton most of the time instead of array, but not today. The other kind of vector is the mathematical vector of linear algebra. And I know I just scared the shit out of a bunch of you with the words mathematical linear algebra, but it's actually pretty simple. In fact, you've already been using them. The ideas of vectors are used in 2D, in 3D graphics, in physics, and they're found in basically all game engines. And this is the kind of vector that's going to be the topic for today. So here's the technical definition of a vector. A quantity having direction as well as magnitude. Uh, quantity just means value, and magnitude just means size, right? And here it says, especially determining the position of one point in space relative to another. So we're talking about points in space. Keep that in mind. Now this might sound like a bunch of bullshit to you guys. So here, let's have a pretty picture. So we'll just uh, grab a vector here. So this is how we visualize vectors. We got an arrow. The butt of the arrow is at the origin. And I just want to note that in this uh, coordinate system, Y is positive up, which is different than input pixel. But otherwise, it's all the same bullshit. So arrow. The butt is at 0, 0, and the head of the arrow is at wherever the, the vector ends, right? Now, we define a vector as a, as a value with direction and magnitude, or size. So you might be tempted to think of it in terms of the length of the vector, uh, and then an angle that represents the direction. But, the proper way to think about vectors, the way that is most fruitful, is to think about them in terms of components. How much do you move in the x direction? How much do you move in the y direction to get from the start to the end? So, bam, this is how we think about vectors. x component, y component, here and here. Now, let's see how we like to write that shit out when we're, you know, reasoning about it in mathematical terms. So if we got some vector v, we generally write it with a v plus this weird arrow thing on top to uh, signify that it's a vector. We can write it out with this bracket not notation here to show the, uh, the individual components. And if we want to give the values of those components, let's say this one is, you know, 5 in the x, 3 in the y, we would write it like this. This is our vector notation here. Now, our vectors can represent a whole bunch of different shit for us in our, you know, game engines and whatnot. Uh, taking a look back at this definition here, we see especially determining position of a point in space. Uh, so that's the most basic way to use a vector, is just to determine a position. So it's it's got a magnitude and a direction. And if we say that the vector starts at the origin, 0, 0, then the, point, the end point of the vector can represent a position in space relative to the origin. And here's the thing. You've already been doing this. You've already been using vectors and you didn't even know it. As just one example, look at the poo game here. We've got float x and float y, and together these represent the position of the poo in space, and that's just our vector x and our vector y here. Now, another thing that we can represent with a vector is a delta position or an amount of movement from one position to another. So if we add another vector here, and we'll just we'll make it about like this. So let's say that this one is a delta, and this is our starting position. So when we move from our starting position by our delta movement, where do we end up? Well, we can, do, we can figure this out by adding the two vectors together. And visually, adding two vectors is just putting them tip to tail. So 
this is our starting position. After we move by our delta, we will end up here. And if I click the show sum button, we get this vector here. Put it back at the origin, we see that, yep, they add up to this vector here. This is the sum. So adding is just putting tip to tail. Old position plus a movement delta equals new position. Now this tip to tail uh, visualization is all well and good, but how do we do this shit with numbers? How do we do it in code? Well, it's very simple if we think about the components, right? Um, so here we've got the, uh, the X component and the Y component of our starting position. And here we've got the X component and the Y component of our delta. And to get the ending position, you just add together the X's and the Y's of both vectors. So if our starting position is 20 and 5 and our delta is 3 and 8, our end position is just going to be our start plus our delta, which is 20 and 5 plus 3 and 8, which is 23 and 13. And that's exactly what we have here. I just like to note that sometimes it's convenient to draw vectors like this at different positions, but it is only correct to think about vectors as starting from the origin. All vectors have their butts at the origin, and then their tips are pointing somewhere out in space. But it's sometimes convenient to move them over here to visualize operations like adding. And if this too sounds familiar, it's because we've already done it in SNCC. So in SNCC, we created a class location, and it's basically just a vector. It has an X and a Y, and we defined a function for it called add, and you're just adding two locations together. So you add the uh, X of one location to the X of the other, and the Y of one to the Y of the other. And so we're just adding, in our game here, we were adding delta location to uh, position here. So we get a delta location, and then later on we just move by that. All right, so we have one operation in the bag, adding two vectors together. Let's look at another one. Uh, we can scale a vector, which is to say we can grow it or shrink it by a factor. We do this by multiplying the vector by what we call a scalar. A scalar is just a normal number, like 5 or 2.3 or whatever, 0. Uh, a vector has an x component and a y component for a two-dimensional vector. Uh, so if we multiply a scalar by a vector, we scale the vector. Funny how that works, huh? And the way you do that is just this. Multiply scalar k by vector v means multiply k by vx and k by vy. It's that simple. So let's say we have a vector 10 by 8 and its length is going to be 12.8, okay? Now we scale it by a factor of 2. So we multiply the x by 2 and the y by 2. Uh, so the length should now be let me think here, uh, 25.6. So if this is 20 and this is 16, this will be 25.6-ish. So let's make it 20 and 16, and there we go, 25.6. So doubling the x and the y will also double the length. Man, would you be surprised if I told you that we are already doing this as well? Take a look at the Pooh game. We've got here vx and vy, the velocity, and this is also a vector. And what we're doing is we're multiplying both these components by the scalar value dt. So we're scaling the velocity vector by the amount of time passed, and that will give us a, uh, a movement delta, which we then add to the position vector. So this code here is equivalent to the vector operation of scaling a velocity vector by dt, finding the sum of the scaled vector and the position, and then storing that result back into the position, thereby, you know, updating the position of the poo. So since we're already using vectors in spirit, let's now convert poo to use vectors in actuality. So here we got the history for the poo game. I added a tag here, t19 start. Uh, so you got two tags here. The end of 17 is the start of 19. And we'll create a branch here, t19 dev. We'll add a header file vec2.h, that's what we're going to call our vector class. We call it vec2 because it's a two-dimensional vector, x and y. But there are other ones you could make, like vec3, which would have x, y, z. Uh, vec4, which would have x, y, z, and w. But for now, we're going to stick with two-dimensional x and y. So, create vec2 class. For the data members, it's going to have x and y float. 
we'll add a constructor for initializing X and Y, and we'll also tell the compiler to generate the default do nothing constructor. Now we want to define the addition operation for our vector type, and we're going to do that by defining the addition operator. If you remember in SNCC with the location, we defined addition as in a function called add, but we also defined uh, comparison by defining the comparison operator, the equality operator. Uh, but we could have also done add by defining the uh, add operator. And that's what we're going to do with vector. So the, uh, the syntax is return type. It's going to return a vec2. And we're defining an operator add. And it's going to take a constant reference to uh, another vec2. And it's a constant function because it doesn't modify uh, the, the thing on the left side. So this function is basically doing left hand, left hand side, let's just do put a comment here, left hand side plus right hand side, and the right hand side is getting passed into here, and the left hand side is the object on which the operation will take place. So quickly, let's implement the constructor now. I'll do member initialization using the, uh, the class initializer list, but you could also put it in here with assignment inside the body of the constructor. And now we're going to implement the operator. And the way I'll choose to do this is by returning a new vec2 uh, whose x is just the x of the left-hand side plus the right-hand side x, and the y is just the y of the left-hand side plus the right-hand side y. There are a whole bunch of ways we could have done this. Doesn't really matter to me. Now I'm going to go to game.cpp. I'm going to include our vector. And let's quickly add some test code in just in the constructor to make sure that the vectors work in prime. So here we create a couple of vectors. We create another vector and initialize it with the sum of these two vectors. And then here we take that vector and we add to it value of v. We accumulate the value of v1 back into it. Right. Good. Are we in debug? We are. Let's do this. Run. So here we got v0. And it gets its value, v1 gets its value. Now let's see if v2 gets the proper value. Should be 10 and 14.5. Uh, and it is 10 and 14.5. And if we accumulate v1 into there, it should be 0 and 16. And it is 0 and 16. So we see that this shit is working. Now, you see this thing here, v equals v2 plus v1 we know that we can often write a shorthand of v2 plus and equals v1 however this will not work in our current system because we have not defined the addition assignment operator for vec2 type so let's make that let's make the addition assignment operator to be uh, complete here now, assignment operators are strange in that they have to return, or they should return, they don't have to, but they should return a reference to the left-hand side for further chaining of operations. Uh, so you should return a reference to the left-hand side. So we have to write it like uh, reference to vec2 operator plus and equals and constant vec2 right hand side again. Now this one can't be constant. It can't be constant because we're modifying the left hand side this time. We are accumulating a value into it. So because of that we can't make this one constant. Uh, let's go and do her up. So there are a couple of ways we could do this. One way is to add a sign x and add a sign y and that works fine. Uh, now there's only one thing missing here and that is we have to return a reference to the object on which this operation is being performed on the left hand side and the way we do this is we go return asterisk this and you can see this turns blue because it's a special uh, keyword and asterisk this is a reference to the current object on which this operation is being called or in other words on the left hand side of the operator so we can return star this and that'll return a reference to ourself the reason why we have to put the star, the asterisk here, is, is to do with pointers. So I will explain this when we do the lesson on pointers. So for now, just trust me that this is how we get a reference to the self object, asterisk this.
So we can do it like this, but there's a little bit of a sexier way to do it because we've already defined addition. So what we can do is we can add the self object, the left hand side with the right hand side and then assign that result back to the self object like this. It's a little sexier. And because assignment returns a reference to the self object, we can actually write it out all on one line like this. If this seems super hard to you, just, you know, ask for help on the forum on the Discord. So now we see that IntelliSense has stopped complaining about this operator here. And if you keep your eye on the ball and we step over the code, you see that we get the proper result. So now we have the addition and the addition assignment operator is defined for our vector type. Now we can do the same for our scalar multiplication operation. And uh, the definition looks like this. Note that we're, the, the, the thing we're taking now isn't a vector type, it's now a scalar float. And since it's a simple value, I'm not going to pass in by reference, I'll just pass in by value. Oh shit, almost forgot this has to return a reference to a vec2, not a vec2 value. And here's how that looks all implemented out. You can see it's basically the same as for addition, only we've replaced this add with multiplication here. And now that the right hand side is a scalar, we don't have to do right hand side dot x dot y, we just do right hand side. There are no components. And if we step through the code here in this little test I made, we can see here that multiplying by 0.5 halves the, the components of the vector. And doing it again, halves them again. So no problems there. Just one thing I'd like you to note, here we can do v0 vector times a scalar. But if we try scalar times vector, it won't work because there is no operator for that. And you might say, well, we, we made the operator. Why isn't it letting us do it? Well. The operator that we made takes a vector on the left hand side and a float on the right hand side. But this one has float on left hand side, vector on right hand side. So we'd have to define a different operator if we also wanted to do the, uh, the reverse order. But I don't care. I'm just going to always put my floats on the right hand side. So I'm not going to bother with defining another operator for the other order. But you could if you wanted to. Now that we've implemented some basic operations for a vector and we've tested them, I'm going to remove these, this test code from here by doing an undo. Yes. And then I am going to commit my changes. So write a simple description here and commit. All right, now here's the thing. We've got our basic operations for a vector. What I want to do now is convert the poo game to using vector instead of using just loose x and y values, we're going to bind them together as uh, vector values, kind of like we did in SNCC with the location. So we include vec2.h and we're going to convert these uh, x and y, vx and vy to vectors, position and velocity, and then this uh, initialization function is now going to take vectors like this. And I'm making it constant reference because vector isn't a simple value, so it's more efficient to pass it in as a reference. We'll also convert the dude's position to vectors. And instead of separate get x and get y functions, we're just going to have one get position function. And let's do the same sort of bullshit for the goal class. Like this. And now that we've converted the, uh, the definitions over, the class definitions, uh, let's now convert the implementations over. So we'll start with poo. Uh, let's toggle. So it doesn't like any of this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle again quickly. Copy. And paste in here. And then all we got to do is go uh, position equal to position in and velocity equal to velocity in. Like that. For the update operation here, we'll just replace that with the vector version. Position plus an equal velocity times dt. So now we got to replace all x with position.x, all vx with velocity.x, etc. Like this, and we do the same sort of stuff for test collision and draw. Like this, note that get x and get y have been replaced by get position. So if you want just the x or the y, you got to get position and then do dot x. To do the same for the dude, first we replace get x and get y with just get position, like this. Uh, then let's see what we got here. So again, we replace all of these x's and y's and with position.x and position.y. 
And if we do that, we get something like this. You don't need me to type it all out for you in real time. I'm sure you can handle that. And last but not least, we have the goal. So we fix up the constructor like this and uh, fix up the draw like this, the test collision like this, the respawn like this, and the update color doesn't need to be changed because there's nothing there to do with vectors. All right, now lastly, we've got to uh, update game.cpp. And luckily, there's not much to do here because most of the details of the classes are implemented in the classes themselves. So we shouldn't have much work to do here, which is, you know, a good indication that we're doing our encapsulation properly. But, so, goal here, we're initializing goal and we need to pass it a vector, not two floats. So we'll just go vec2 and we'll create a vec2 out of these two floats and everyone's happy and we're gonna do the same thing down here for our initialization of the poos like so and like so and lastly down here for the respawn of the goal I'm just gonna create some vectors and pass those in instead of our loose floats and if we try to build that, we see it compiles fine, and if we run it... Oh shit! That, that scared the shit out of me. Uh, it runs fine, it works exactly the same as it did before. Except it's fucking really loud. Oh shit. Neighbor's gonna kill me. But anyways, so there we go. Works the same, uh, except now it's running the super sexy vectors under the hood. And this is how we're going to choose to live our life from now on. No more loose, loosey-goosey X's and Y's floating around. Now we're going to make everything as vectors. And it is going to be good. Once you learn to think in vectors, you can do so much more shit. There are many advanced operations that become trivial when you approach them from the point of view of vectors. And that's why I'm introducing vectors fairly early in this series. So now that we've migrated our game and we've tested, I'm going to remove this dumb comment here. And I am going to commit all of our code now. Yes. So the usual way I do things is I, when I create a class, I add member functions to it as needed. I don't add any extra stuff. But when I'm creating a, a general utility class, like for example our Vec2 class, that I know I'm going to be using a lot in the future, sometimes I just add lots of stuff that I think will be useful in the future, even if I don't need it right now. So let's add a few more fairly basic but super useful operations to our uh, Vec2 class. So the first operation we're going to add is Vector Subtraction. So Subtraction asks or answers the question, uh, you know, what is the delta from A to B? So if I do B minus A, I'm getting the delta from A to B, or I am asking the question, how do I get to B from A? So let's say you got two vectors here, vector A and vector B. So what is the delta from A to B? Well, that's just a vector that you draw from A to B. You just, uh, you just make the tips touch. Now, I was just talking about fingertips. What were you thinking about, weirdo? So graphically, B minus A is just the vector that's drawn from the tip of A to the tip of B. Now there's another way you can think of this. You can think of B minus A as B plus negative A, which is the same as B plus A scaled by a scalar of negative one. Uh, so the negative of a vector is just that vector times a scalar of negative one. So if we multiply uh, A by negative one, we get negative six and negative three. So let's uh, move this to negative 6, negative 3. And see, there we go. And as you can see, that just flips the vector in the opposite direction. So negating a vector flips it to the opposite direction. And now if we are to add this, add this A to B, the result that we get, well, I'll just do it here. Add this to this, the result is this. It's the same as touching the tips. So you got two options for visualizing uh, subtraction. You can touch the tips or you can add the flip. And you can probably predict this for yourself, but this is how you calculate the subtraction. You just subtract the x components and the y components and there you have vector subtraction. And basically identical to the addition, we declare subtraction like this and we define it like this.
And let's just skip testing this operator because I don't want this video to last forever. All right, next operation. Say we got a vector like this. Uh, a common thing we want to find out about a vector is how long is this motherfucker? So the way we store vectors, we always know uh, the X component and the Y component. But we don't know the length of this side. Look at this. This is forming a right angle triangle. So we know this side, we know this side, but we don't know this side, which is the length of the vector. But, but we do know Pythagorean theorem, which is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So a and b are these two sides here, and c is the length of our vector. So all we got to do is square x, square y, and then if we want to if we want to calculate c, we take the square root of those the sum of those squares so if we call this vector v then the length of v is equal to this is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared now sometimes uh we don't actually need the length sometimes we might be able to do with the length squared and this is actually very useful because the length squared is just a squared plus b squared so if we calculate the length squared we don't actually need to take this square root, and the square root function in C is very slow. Well, I mean, in all programming languages, taking the square root is a slow operation. So if we can avoid it, we like to calculate the length squared instead. So how does this translate into code? So we create these two member function declarations, get length and get length squared. And then in here, we're going to define them. We're going to implement them. So get length squared is very easy, right? That's just x squared, x times x, plus y times y. Super simple. Now, get length is going to be the square root of the length squared. So, to be able to do the square root, we have to include uh, c math. And that'll give us some math functions, one of which will give us the motherfucking square root. So... We're going to do uh, return std sqrt square root of get length squared. Like this. And there you go. So here, if you only need the uh, length squared, you call this one and you avoid having to calculate the square root. But if you need this, if you need the actual length, then you call get length and that will calculate the length squared and then take the square root of that. All right, let's do a quick test here. Let's say we got two vectors of position, uh, vector 0 and vector 1, and we want to find the distance between these two points in space. Well, we know that if we subtract these two vectors, vector 1 minus vector 0, we will get a vector going from vector 0 to vector 1, and the length of this vector is obviously going to be the distance between these two points. So, we have to calculate uh, vector 1 minus vector 0, and then calculate the length of that. And the answer should be 10. So here I got some test code, vector 0, vector 1. And the distance is equal to vector 1 minus vector 0 dot get length. And this should return around 10. Let's see if we got it right. So, initialize both our vectors. And then we're going to calculate the distance. And the distance is equal to 9.433. What the fuck? Oh, wait. This is 12. But in here... 13. So if I adjust this back and then I adjust this, we get, oh, we gotta, we gotta move the tip, make the tips touch. 9.4, which is the result we get here. All is well in the world. All right, there's one final operation that we're gonna do before we wrap it up today, and that is the normalization operator. So to normalize a vector means to scale the length of the vector so that it's one but to do it in such a way that it keeps the same direction. You see, whenever we want to use a vector, in, in general, when we use a vector just to describe a direction and we don't care about the length, we make the length 1 because it's just, it's very nice for lots of different kinds of math operations. So, if we've got some vector uh, and we just want to distill the directionality out of the vector, we normalize it. Uh, so we make its length 1 while still keeping the same direction. Now, the way you do that is quite simple. Well, let's say you have a vector of length 2 and you want to make it have length 4. You want to scale it 
doubling its length. Well, you just multiply that vector times scalar 2, right? So, if you have a vector of length, say, 5, and you want to scale it down to a length of 1, you multiply that vector by 1 over 5, which is to say that you multiply x times 1 over 5 and y times 1 over 5. So, if you want to scale any vector so that its length is 1, simply take the vector and multiply it by 1 over the length of the vector. And that is motherfucking normalization. So I've added two function declarations here to vec2. The uh, normalize function is a mutator. It changes the vec2 by normalizing it. And I also made a get normalized one, which doesn't change the vec2, but simply returns the normalized version of the current vector. So for get normalized, first thing we do is we calculate the length of the current vector. So we get the length. Wait, that was dumb. Float length is equal to get length. Then what we're going to do is we're going to basically divide the vector by the length, or multiply by 1 over the length. So we're going to return the current vector times 1.0 divided by the length. And then for normalize, we're just going to return this is equal to get normalized. You don't have to make uh, normalize return uh, a reference to the self, but I, I like to just in case you want to chain operations. But unlike for assignment operators, you can make this one void and it's okay too. Now this is fine and it'll work, but there's a problem. What if we try to normalize a vector that is 0, 0, that's at the origin? The length of that vector is going to be 0. And 1 divided by 0, you, you can't divide by 0, the result is infinity, it's terrible. It's going to fuck you over super hard. So, we want to add a little test in here. If length is equal to 0, and we normally we don't want to do equal, equality comparisons with floating point numbers, but this is a special case, we just want to avoid divide by exactly 0. So I feel like this is okay. Uh, so if length is equal not equal to zero, then we want to return this times the inverse of length. Otherwise, we're just going to return the current vector, which should be zero, zero, because the only vector that has a length of zero is a vector of zero, zero. And there you go, you have your operations to get you pure distilled directionality. And here's our completed table of operations with our length operation and our normalize operation. And there you have it, the chilly intro to 2D vectors. Uh, get used to them because we're going to be using them basically all the time from now on. I know a lot of you guys are interested in 3D shit, and vectors are going to form the groundwork of basically all 3D calculations. So you gotta learn this shit eventually, and that's why I'm introducing it to you early. It's going to make our code sexier, and it's just, it's just fucking good. Alright, it's time for the homework. I got two assignments for you. The first one is kind of a little bit of a puzzle. Uh, by the way, these both have to do with vectors. So the first assignment is there is a problem with the movement in the Poo game, but I'm not going to tell you what that problem is. I want you to try to think of what Chili considers the problem to be, and then I want you to find a solution to it. So there's something about the movement in the Poo game that isn't quite good, it's not consistent. I want you to think about it, figure it out, and then if you can figure it out, solve it. That's number one. It's a little bit of a puzzle, so if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Now the second one is I'm gonna do a little bit of a change to the Poo game. So, Poo game now, uh, let's see if I can get this here. Instead of moving with the keyboard, the arrow keys, you're gonna be moving with the mouse. So if you left click, let me just do it here, left click, the dude should move towards the cursor, um, like this. Now don't cut that poo, there we go. So you're always oh, coming for me, there we go. So th in this way, now you're not just limited to eight directions of motion, you're basically, you have infinite directions of motion, he moves directly towards the mouse cursor, 360 degrees of beautiful poo avoiding freedom. By the way, I know I haven't actually covered mouse uh, input 
much or at all in these videos, but I will put a link on the wiki page to some documentation that you can use to figure out how to use uh, mouse input in the framework. You know, part of being a programmer is being able to read documentation and figure out how to do some shit on your own, so that's part of this assignment. But yeah, hope the ideas weren't too complicated for you. If you're still having trouble, you know, maybe watch the video a couple more times and then come to the forum or come to the Discord and talk to us. Uh, we'll be able to help you out with anything you might be having trouble with. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++.